Hi, welcome to Rider Siggity's channel. I'm Rider's Dad Mike, and today we're going to talk about some ideas on how to make your child a better rider, how to make him have or her have more fun when riding, and um, how if they want to race to become a better racer. And we're going to discuss this uh, basically four topics. One is um, how to keep it fun but productive, uh, how to choose the right bike would be number two. Uh, the third thing is to make deals with your child, which will teach them not only life lessons, but motivate them to do the right thing in riding. And the fourth is uh, how to keep their feelings in mind and why you should do that. So uh, let's get started. All right, so um, keeping it fun but productive is cliche, but it's true. So how do you keep it fun but productive? So. Uh, you want to make sure there are other children involved in your rides, right? You don't want to have it just be you and your son or your daughter. Uh, no, you might actually want that. Your child would probably enjoy it a lot more if there was some other kids for them to ride with. If they're young, they'll play in between riding. If they're older, they can just converse. And you always want to have another rider who is just a little bit faster than your child, so your child can try to latch on to them and learn techniques. Uh, another person or child who's much faster is not going to help because they'll just be gone um, and they won't be able to watch their techniques. And the other thing is, you don't always want, your, your child shouldn't always be the slowest kid on the ride because that might be a little demoralizing. So you want to try to have groups of kids, uh, all, all abilities. And it might be tough to find those kids or those parents, like-minded parents. So what I did is I actually started taking my son to the races, rider, and I started circulating in the pits with other parents. And I pretty much changed all my friends from people who I used to ride with, who didn't have kids, to now riding parents who had kids. And uh, even if your kid is not interested in racing, they can go there and just experience it. I call it a trail ride with other kids. And that's where you'll meet a lot of other parents with kids like-minded. Another thing you want to keep in mind is to make sure your child has um, good equipment as far as the motorcycle, which we'll get into, what's good and what's not, and good uh, safety equipment because nothing will stunt a child from wanting to ride than getting hurt, right? Nothing more than that. Like they get hurt, they're like, well, I need a new sport or something more different fun to do. So knee pads, extremely important. Boots, not only important for protection, but a lot of the cheap boots in kid sizes are way too much plastic. It's just all plastic all the way up the inside of the shin and they never ever flex right. So your kids will walk like little stormtroopers, like robots. And when they can't, when they don't flex right, they're not gonna be able to feel the pedals, uh, the brake pedal or the shifter properly. On the other hand, some boots are just all pleather and they're so soft they don't really protect that much. So, um, not that they're going so fast and so hard that they need the most protective boot, but you also really want to get something that has the, the right amount of flex. So boots with a hinge are really the way to go. And if, they're, if it's a smaller child, uh, a, they might be a size six, which is an adult size six, but there is a big difference between adult six boots and youth six boots. And what the difference is, and, and same with five and seven, and maybe and even eight actually for sure is the kids' boots have a much lower, uh, smaller shin area, where the adult boots have a taller shin area. And if the shin area is too tall, it comes right up to their knee and it becomes a problem with knee pads and stuff. So even though the foot area, the six, is the same, the shin height makes a difference. So you wanna look for a youth-specific boot. So we're gonna get a little bit into uh, the motorcycle in a minute, but since we are talking about equipment, um, you also want to make sure your uh, child doesn't have totally scratched up horrible to see goggles. I see all these kids with goggles that I would never ever ride in myself. They're pretty bad. Um, also, depending on the climate that you're riding in, uh, you want to make sure they're not fogging all the time. There's a lot of cheap goggles out there. Uh, I found that the Scots have the best fog resistance, but if you don't have Scots, you can buy no fog cloths. And prep your son or daughter's goggles so they don't fog too because that's important that they're able to see if you look at pictures from a lot of races a lot of kids have to take their goggles off because they have cheap 
Chinese made goggles. Let's talk a little bit about the tires. So, especially if you have what I call a trail bike, like a TTR, a CRF, uh, a KLX, uh, these bikes come with Chinese tires. Some are, I mean, they're brand name, but they're, they're, they're not very good tires at all, and they almost never wear out. They also almost, uh, don't grip very well either. So, you, it's, it's good to get your child, uh, if, they're, if you want them to enjoy the sport, have a decent set of tires. The tires that they come with, I was actually told by the manufacturer, are made not to rip up people's lawns, but they're also made to not wear down either. So keep that in mind with the tires. Okay, let's talk a little bit about getting the right bike. Um, and when a child is very small, one thing that's really crucial is the weight of a bike. Right? We'll get into different size child children in a minute, just starting with the smaller. So I found that it was best we had the PW50, we had the um, Honda 50. We The best starter bike was a uh, electric battery powered bike. They weigh about, and I'm not talking the KTM 50 race bike, like we had an offset, I think there's a Parrot model out now, a couple of the ones. They they, Stasix. Stasix, oh they're great too. Uh, not really motorcycles, but yeah, they're great ways to start a kid. So the electric bikes are half the weight of the Hondas and the uh, uh, other full uh, um, gas powered bikes. That makes a big difference when your kid is very small. Plus they're completely tunable with, um, that's actually a Cadillac. Pause. All right, you can keep going. So as your child gets a little older, you're gonna start looking at bigger bikes. If it's going to be a two stroke, it's really important, in my opinion, to get a two-stroke that has a power valve. Uh, there's a lot of cheap bikes out there, Japanese bikes that don't have a power valve, and the problem that for the bike that doesn't have a power valve is that it does not have any bottom end power compared to a bike that does. And there's a lot of cheap bikes out there that have power valves. So um, a bike without bottom end power is gonna be difficult to ride. We're not talking about racing, we're talking about this difficult to ride. So something with a power valve is always uh, a big, a big plus. So obviously uh, there's some maintenance involved. You have to decide if you want to go with a lower maintenance bike, which is going to be much heavier and harder to handle for your child, or a higher maintenance bike, which usually has a lot more aluminum and weighs 20, 30, sometimes even 50 pounds less. Um, but another thing that I, I would really keep in mind is you always want to start shopping for your child's next motorcycle before they need it. This way you can find the right bike at the right price. Meaning, if your son is on a 50 now or your daughter and you think they're gonna need a 65 at one point or a 85, start shopping now so you can find a clean, well-priced motorcycle. And even if you have to buy it a little early, uh, at least you'll have it on hand for when you're ready for it. And it's a, uh, it's, it's a tough sell sometimes if you have a partner. Sometimes you gotta clear these things with them, but. Park's gonna get painted and that litter box! It's been three weeks, three weeks, and you think I could've married Don Hoffman. And it wouldn't hurt for you to say that you love me once in a while. What I, the way I look at the motorcycles is, especially mini bikes, especially when you buy them used, they hold their value way better than full-size motorcycles. And if you start shopping six months or even a year in advance, you'll get it at the right price. When you're done with it, you'll get what you paid for it as long as you don't destroy it. So you spend $1,000 or $1,500 on a motorcycle, you're not just spending $1,500 like you are on a couch or a piece of jewelry that you'll never get back. You'll get that $1,500 or $1,000 back, especially if you start shopping early. So buying a motorcycle that is too big for your child presents a lot of problems, right? They're gonna tip over easily, especially if you live in the type of terrain where it's difficult for them to navigate or they're beginners. But buying a bike that is too small is also gonna have them very cramped on the bike, which is also difficult to maneuver. Then they start riding with their feet angled down or dragging their feet. So remember, the, the, the title of this video is to make your son or daughter have more fun and be a better rider. So that's when it comes into shopping for the bikes early, getting them at the right price, getting the right bike that fits your son or daughter properly, not trying to wait for them to grow into it or drag it out a little longer 
so they can uh, so you don't have to buy another bike because again you're not really just spending your money you're just parking the money okay. so another way to get your children and uh, into riding and faster at riding is to make deals with them you don't have to go to this extent but with my dad and I we made a deal that if I work out every day which you can see on my Garmin watch I record my workouts and then you can check it so if I work out every day and I keep my grades up in school, I get the best of the best. I get new tires, new bikes, and he even points out to me sometimes at races, he says, look, this kid's tires, I mean, they might be they might be able to use them for the race, but you have brand new tires, and I know that he's giving it his all. Another thing good about making these deals is that not only is your kid getting better, but he's also learning life lessons. like. By keeping my grades up and getting stuff in return and um, working out every day, I'm kind of seeing how like the world works because I'm um, <laughs> I'm working for stuff in return, like anyone would at a job. So it's kind of it's teaching them. Okay. Right. Fourth thing and last thing we're going to discuss is keep your children's feelings in mind. So I think everyone starts out by doing this because that's what parents do. They're good at being concerned about their kids but there comes a point where you go to an event you go to a race you go to a trail ride and your child is not performing how you think and how they probably are capable of but they're not doing it right so I've seen a lot what they call the word term moto dads they're yelling at their kid they're telling them they're better try harder uh, they're not doing it right so you have to keep in mind that sometimes your kid is also going to be really disappointed that he didn't do well, that he didn't do it right, right? So if you can see that they're disappointed or you know them well enough that they're disappointed, save the discussion for another day, right? That discussion if there's something you want to go over. Because you got to keep, put yourself in their shoes. Another friend of mine had a really good expression when he saw a moto dad going off on his kid. He turned to him and said, if you think it's that easy, let's see you do it. And I always compare it to video games. Somebody can hand you a controller, say this is the clutch, this is the brake, this is the gas, this is the lean over, whatever. You just told, you just told, someone told you everything that it does, but can you do it? Can you do it under pressure? Can you do it at speed? It's a lot. So always keep their feelings in mind. Um, at the same time, you don't want to really baby your child uh, and not, not let them know how the world really works, but there's a time for everything, right? So I suggest to resist the urge to be what I call a full-time director. Constantly say, stand up, toes in, look ahead, leg out. Like these are things you want to teach your child, but you can't be saying it all the time, right? Even if you're right, you gotta sometimes let them go out there and just have fun. So one way you can kind of get the point across without telling your son or daughter in a way they're not doing it right, is when you're in a gathering with other kids, you can ask them, do you look ahead or do you look down? Do you stand in the bumps or do you sit? So they'll hear you say that to other kids and they'll pick up on what you're saying. But to say it all the time, constantly talking on the side of the track or the trail is going to not make it very fun for your child. So there's our four uh, ways to make your child faster and have more fun. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have, please like and subscribe. Uh, we have a lot of highly edited race videos, but we're starting, we're going to branch out into a lot more how-to videos, how to uh, prep for a, a race, how to prep for hot weather, uh, the different kinds of racing, uh, little tips and tricks on how to change wheels that you may, may or not learn something. I thank you very much for watching and I, I wish you best of luck with your uh, children. And if you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments. A very close call. Could have gone either way. It was right on the line. Well, Ferguson's not too happy with it. I can tell you that much. Oh, he's beating him like a rented mule. <laughs> and the ref's just tuning him out. Boy, where do you train to take a beating like that? He said, when's that porch going to get painted? And that litter box, it's been three weeks. Three weeks, and you think I could have married Don Hoffman. And would it hurt for you to say that you love me once in a while?